So welcome, dear listeners. Today I'm super happy to have with us Raul Arredondo. So Raul, why don't you tell us first of all, uh, for how long have you been a business owner? What type of business are you running? Tell us a bit more. Yeah, yeah, and and, and uh, thanks, Thomas. I I'm very happy to uh, you know talk to talk to you here. Um, so what I what I'm doing is a little bit of an extension of what I've been doing the last uh, 20 or so years. Um, and and so just to be very brief, the last 20, 25 years I spent in the automotive industry where I primarily have developed strategies, then sold them to the yeah. leadership of the companies that I work for. And then I went through the execution part of it, um, including leading the marketing efforts. And so I'm taking literally that experience and and just now doing it uh, by myself or uh, on my own, if you will. So the business that I that I lead is uh, we do advisory and consulting specifically for the automotive industry. Okay. Uh, more tied to the mobility space because that is the future, um, uh, and and it's really the value chain of the mobility, batteries, charging, uh, even renewables, uh, et cetera. And then we focus on yes, advisory, which is which is amazing because it's just. It could be anything. And then the consulting piece of it is I'm very focused on answering the question around what is the best growth opportunity for the company? Okay. And then uh, because of my marketing background, the other big question that I answer is, well, what is the best marketing strategy or marketing campaign to support that strategy? And so I started, um, I mean, I fully went into this uh, in November of last year. So I still haven't reached my first anniversary. So I'm very, I'm a very young company. Which is very interesting because then you, you have some interesting uh, stuff to share with us. Like for example, up to now as a business owner, what has been your, your biggest success? Well, I, I'm surprised in a good way that... Um, I've had a lot of positive impact on a lot of people. Wow, and nice. so when I when I announce um, that I'm doing this thing, and even when I reach out to people, I am truly amazed and, and I'm very grateful. Like I'm this is me being grateful. I'm truly amazed on the response of, of people that, for instance, people that I didn't really think I had connected very willing to open their doors to talk to me to introduce me to other people etc right. so i'm I, i've been very very uh, amazed uh and i'm very grateful because i i i guess i'm i'm a good human being and so i'm happy that uh, other people think that way yeah i think that's that i think it's good that you mentioned that point because uh as much as it People are very often to do cold calling and stuff like that because, of course, you 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 jump onto someone who who is doing something else. So it's a, and they always think, or at least it's a, a lot of what I heard that you know meeting people is not nice. You know, people are not nice with you. And in fact, I disagree. I'm fully agree with you. There are mostly nice people out there. It's about mm -hmm. human beings, and we humans we we naturally like humans. I think I don't know if you agree. I, I I mean, I, I don't know what to call that. I mean, I don't know if it has a, uh, a label, but I I mean, I, I also believe that uh, humans are inherently good and we want to do good things and we want to help others. I mean, that's basically my default setting, mm. if you will, when when I talk to people, when I need uh, when I meet new people, I'm, I'm not I, I don't want to say negative. I'm, I'm just. I, I think yeah. highly of humankind. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny when I when I when I did my engineering studies, we had the the guy who founded the the, the school had mm -hmm. hired one guy. He told him, "I'm going to make out of these guys engineers. I want you to make out of these guys humans, nice human beings." And in fact, we we got a grade when we started the studies. It lasted five years to become a diploma engineer in France. Mm -hmm. We got a grade of C. In the the on the human communication level, and we had to get at least an A or a B to get our diploma. So I found it nice, and somehow it reached me that you start by thinking of people pretty positively. 
and, and then most of the yeah. time you notice that there are there are ten percent of assholes and the rest is pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and and yes, you're you're right. I mean, Thomas, it's yes. I I'm also not naive. I met those people that are not as nice. Um, uh, uh, but that's fine. I I think it's um, it's just uh, you know, navigating that and 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 really to then switch back to my business, and that's fine. There's there's um, I mean, I talked about the positive, but also the negative is. Yes, there are people that I thought, hey, you know, I have a great relationship and they don't answer my emails. They don't like yeah. they don't answer my texts. They don't. And and it's, um, you know, it's OK. I, I'm OK with it. You don't. I thought we had a good relationship. You don't want to answer yeah. it. Communicate. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Yeah. And sometimes you just notice that they, they just didn't have the, the, the brain bandwidth at, at one time. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. good positive stuff. Now, of course, you have a short experience, but what were some of the failures, some of the of the things that you had to try out, and and what did you learn from that? Yeah, well, um, so first of all, I I almost want to say I don't believe in failures as long as you learn from them. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, if if you fail and then you just then give up then yes that is true failure so true failure does exist um so what what i've i, I think the failures that i've had in my business um and, and you're right i mean it's it's very young um even though i i very confidently said oh i'm i'm very focused on e-mobility mm. and uh strategy and marketing it's been an evolution um because like early in my conversations, people are like, so e-mobility, is that just cars? So then I would have to explain, uh, or people would say, is that just batteries? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've been, um, again, I've learned from the questions that my customers have asked to be more explicit on what actually I do. The same with strategy. Actually, strategy is, is a fascinating concept, I guess. And, and I don't know if it's, you know, in the English language or maybe in, in other languages, it's the same. But when I talk about, oh, I, I do strategy, marketing it doesn't get as many questions. But when I say strategy, they're like, yeah, what do you mean strategy? Yeah. I said, well, you know, you have a strategic plan, you have some long term and we, we really go down this rabbit hole of, well, but it's a business strategy, it's market strategy, it's this or that. And um, and again, so these are lessons learned to for me to say, OK, I, at the beginning, I wasn't able to explain myself what I was trying to solve. And so as I, I learn, and actually I have a pitch deck that I work on maybe once a week because I'm, I'm trying to make it very simple for people to say, oh, I know how you can help me or, or I know what you do and I know you, you know, it's not gonna, yeah. you know, it's not gonna work. So it's, it's failure, sure. Uh, but it's also the opportunity to make it better for, yeah. for the next cut for the next conversation. Yeah. And, and so that, that's very interesting because there are often people think it has to be perfect, you know, from the beginning, I have to have that script to call that has to be perfect. My pitch has to be perfect. And, 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 and then they never produce it or they never uh, have it face reality. So from, from what you say, I mean, you agree that you should do it, go for it and, and learn from it. Well, and, and, and I think uh, this is very valid for, for everyone in general, but I, I think as a business owner, as a solopreneur, you have to be okay with rejection. Like you have oh. to be okay with, with someone saying, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand you. I don't need you. You have to be okay with that because again, you take that, you make it better. And, and then that builds resilience, right? Because, it, you know, you may and i've had these these uh you know situation where i'm like i know i can help this person how can the person not understand like i yeah. send the pitch i i talk to the person how can the person not need me i know they need me. but you have to let go and you have to say i it's on me i was not able to properly communicate yes, yes. what i do my valid proposition sure. i'm going to get better and then that's okay and you move forward yeah, and then you have to accept to do follow-ups. You have to do to accept to keep going. One day they may come to you. 
I mean, that's what I always explain to people. You have 2% of your market who need you now, so they will ask for your help. 38% that may come later, attracted by the two person, and 60% who couldn't care less about what you are doing, and you will never get them. And as if you run after them, they are what the English call tire kickers, you know? When they want to buy your car, they kick in the tires. They want a free test. They want a free period. They want some more samples. And they may buy from you once, but once, then they will never come back and they will be the worst customer that you can ever have on earth. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, so, it's, so, so it's, it's, it, it's important, uh, yeah, to be able to identify the type of customer early in the process. And again, that's also a lesson learned. I mean, again, lesson learned, knowing your customers, knowing, trying to figure out who's going to work out as quickly as possible. Yeah. So did you did you spend some time defi defining who your ideal customer is or due to the fact that you worked 20 years or so in that industry, you already knew who they are? Um, so I had a suspicion. Uh, I, I, I had a suspicion or, or better yet, I had a hypothesis. I had okay. a hypothesis uh, at which actually I built it into my pitch deck because... When I was working for large companies, uh, one of the one of the biggest things is that, uh, and it varies, but some very large companies, you have all this market data, all this customer data, all these tools, all these whatever, whatever. Yeah. Uh, even you know you have people helping you, all these things. You you have access to um, you know consultants and whatever, and and you produce the strategy and sometimes the strategy works, sometimes it doesn't because you have alignment, misalignment, all these things. Yeah. And, uh, and I had a suspicion that if that's happening in companies that are fully resourced, if you will, mm. what might be happening in companies that don't have that bandwidth. And so my, uh, how it started is I had the hypothesis of, well, small man manufacturing companies, startups, uh, privately owned companies, these companies, you know, they could be successful. Yeah. But they're hearing about these, all these changes in the automotive industry and they don't have professionals, so we will, or they don't have enough professionals or enough data or enough whatever to do something about it. And so I, I, um, my initial hypothesis was I can help because I already know the industry. So they don't have to teach me what the industry is about. Mm -hmm. and, and because I've done it all, I can do, you know, the full strategy development or the full marketing campaign for a company. And it's again, primarily because there are a ton of companies that just don't have that skill set. Um, and again, the hypothesis, small companies, mm -hmm. small privately owned companies, uh, et cetera. Okay, okay, interesting. So what else have you learned uh, during this uh, short period as a business owner? Um, so, um, well, I already spoke about this. Uh, I, I've learned that, yes, I have to be, I have to be very, very explicit in, in um, who I reach, uh, how I reach them, uh, the message that I give. Um, I, I am a believer that um, the more narrowly you focus, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've, I've learned, I, yeah, I guess I've learned that if I play to my superpowers, you know, if I play to my experience in automotive, my experience in developing strategies and selling uh, it to the C-suite, if I play to all those things, in when I take a project, I'm better off versus, I don't know, maybe taking a project that's a little bit on, you know, a tangent where I say, well, I don't know that feel or that function very well, but I'll take it on. The closer you stay, and it's just my opinion, I mean, mm -hmm. sure. my personal opinion, but the closer you stay to what you're good at, the better you'll be in performing and, and adding value to your customer yeah. and also you're going to be happier 
Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, I, I would hope that everyone that goes into their own business is because they want to have a happier life. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah. No, I fully, I fully agree with you. I, I'm trying to, to explain to people that uh, for themselves, for their own decision process and for their clients, you have to know mm -hmm. who you are and why you are doing what you're doing, which are in fact why and who are two parameters of the ethical persuasion formula. And very often people who start a business, because you don't make money as fast as you expected. I mean, it's pretty obvious yeah. uh, as, as, as my, my partner, Grant Cardone would say, you always underestimate the amount of work it will take you and the time it will take. And by underestimating that, you reach a phase where you are in panic mode and then you start running after what I call shiny bullets. You know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And and you are very right on that. You are no more focusing on why you started the whole thing. And, and you yourself don't understand what you are doing. And your clients, your potential clients have no idea what you are doing, where you are going with that. It doesn't resonate with anyone. And boom, then you have to focus back and you wasted six months. So no, you, I fully agree with you. It's very, very good advice. Well, and, and, and you know, part of it is uh, we all have competitors. We all, oh, yeah. th there's always at least one other company out there, one other person doing the same thing that you're doing. So the further away you go from your strengths, the more you're going to compete against other people that are actually better suited to do that mm. random thing. Yeah. And, and so then, again, you're adding less value to your customers. You're getting frustrated. You're not as happy. It's just a yeah. recipe for disaster. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Recipe for disaster. I love that. So um, what takeaway or what insightful lessons would you like the auditors to, to keep in mind today after at the end of this uh, this podcast? So oh, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, use something that you said that is very valid. Um, one is, um, yeah, it's going to take longer than you expect. It's going to take more effort than you expect. Uh, all these things, like it, it's, uh, uh, I, I would say the average solopreneur, we start, we start this adventure saying, oh yeah, you know, I already have this and this and this and yeah. this. It's going to be great. People are just going to come in. They're going to give me like all their money, everything is going to be great. I'm not going to, you know, struggle. And so, so planning is very important and, and being realistic about your planning. Uh, that's, mm. that's like one key takeaway for myself. The other key takeaway is, and I, obviously this is going to vary from country to country. Uh, but one of the things that I, feel that really helped me one of the first conversations i had was with the person does that helps me with my taxes okay uh, and then i had a conversation with my financial advisor um again it's going to change country to country but if if you have a good sense of what your options are legally and mm. how that affects your taxes and whatever that actually sometimes just helps you make certain decisions of how yeah. you're going to run your business etc um and then the the other thing that I would say is that, um, yes, in 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 I would say in, in every circumstance, uh, you're going to spend time on the operations of your business, not your business, right? I, I my business mm. is doing consulting and advisory for other people, but that's not the only thing that I do. I do a lot of other things. Uh, I would say out of all the other things that I do, one thing that I would recommend to everyone, spend the time to do marketing. Um, yeah. Yes, I, I'm a little bit biased because I that's part of what I do. No, but, but you're right. You are right. The the, the power of, of marketing is, is um, yes, it's not necessarily the work that your company is focused on, right? Maybe your company is doing some you know, high-end chocolates or whatever, or mm. or you're doing taxes for small companies, but still spend in in as you're starting, especially spend the time to build your brand to do marketing, yeah. because it, that is that's an, an investment that that then will give you pay you back if you will as you start getting business word of mouth, other people coming, they'll identify you, they'll identify your your brand, so. Yes, you spend a lot of time in 
not doing work in operations, but just make sure that yeah. part of that is marketing. Yeah, I, I I do help people obviously with with that part because the decision making and so on, and the amount of companies who start with we have a, a such a good idea and it's never selling. But guys, you don't even know to who you are selling it, you know. Yeah, and you should start with knowing. Who do you want to serve? You know, how can you help them? Maybe it, the idea you have has nothing to do with who you want to serve. But if you start with a product that you have thought, because as you thought it, it was for you, uh, they may not want what you like, or you may have to talk about it very differently. And there are people I admire or, or, who are who are or, able to, um, to start a business without even knowing what they're going to sell, but they do marketing. They do market. They do know who they want to talk to. And they are so good that the people they want to talk to are defining the product. And so, of mm -hmm. course, it's a killer because you're selling exactly what they want. So that's amazing. Do marketing, yeah. guys. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Well, and, 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 um, and I mean, it's, it's, it's not that difficult in, in that it's the, the, if you will, the trick is you put yourself in your, target customers uh shoes if you will or or i would uh, say brain <laughs> brain yeah thank you even better yeah brain because it's as simple as saying well what does your customer value what are they willing to pay you know it's it's basically all about them and then yes you you do eventually talk about yourself your product but the more you make it about your customer your target yeah. customer you know and, and so again it's 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 not that difficult, but you do need, and and you kind of alluded to this. You need time to think about, like, well, who am I trying to sell? Who am I trying to track? Who, you know, who really needs this, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, how? Thanks for all that. Now, if people want to talk more about about you, with you, about what you are doing, where can they find you? So they can find me uh, on LinkedIn. Um, um, both, um, you know, I'm, I'm there, Raul Arredondo, and, and I don't think there's that many of us. And, and then you'll see, uh, a, a lot of postings from me, or you can also look for my company, um, that's e-mobility strategy and marketing, you know, okay, strategy okay. and marketing, uh, and again, and, and we're the only ones that have that name. So you can find me there, uh. Uh, and yeah, I'd be happy to help with uh, with anything. Thank you so much for your time. Raul. It was a real pleasure. I hope we get you soon back on the, on the podcast. Thank you, Thomas. It was a pleasure talking to you.